River in far north Queensland lies within the customary lands of the Yuku Baja Muliku people, the traditional owners of the land and sea country around Archer Point, south of Cooktown. The river is home to an amazing array of aquatic life, such as freshwater turtles and many types of fish. It is a central part of the culture and identity of the Yuku Baja Muliku community. The Annan River also provides an important source of food, freshwater mussels. Collected by hand from the river's sandbanks, these mussels are an important part of the living link between the Yuku Baja Muliku people and the river, a link that has lasted for tens of thousands of years. While the mussels are an important and nutritious food source, the act of collecting, cooking and sharing mussels is vital to preserving the community's traditional knowledge, practices and culture. But there is a problem on the Annan. Some of the mussel beds, which have been part of community life for generations, are dying. In this area where we are now, pools, we used to be able to come down two years ago and the kids would find them in the shallow, no problem, and or they'd be picking them up off the bank and chucking them back in because they're still alive. And as we just saw this morning, there's hardly anything there. Well, I think we found 10 at the most in the last few hours. That's it. That's that's what we were noticing, a big decrease, and there was heaps of dead ones. Unfortunately, little scientific research has been done on freshwater mussels in Cape York, and their biology and ecology is largely unknown. Knowing that something had to be done, the Yuku Baja Muliku Rangers formed a partnership with scientists from James Cook University in Townsville. Working together, the rangers and scientists formed a research team and developed a plan for a scientific expedition to the Annan River to map and survey the mussel beds. As joint co-investigators in the project, the rangers and the research team were able to share their knowledge about mussels, fishes and other aquatic life. This knowledge exchange also included training rangers and survey techniques, an important outcome for the project. Well, the rangers not only we'll be gaining an, a better understanding of that population, but they're also gaining skills that we can use in other areas uh, for, for different types of surveys as well. So that, those skills are going to be real beneficial over the whole range of program, not just with mussels. While the rangers picked up new scientific survey skills, their detailed knowledge of the Annan River system was essential to the expedition's success. So one of the best things about this project is the opportunity to work with the traditional rangers who know this country best. And what that means is they can take you to a spot where the animals are and instead of searching up and down the river, they can take you right to the animals directly and they can share their knowledge with us about where to find them and how they live in the Annan. Guided by the rangers, the expedition began by surveying mussel populations at key sites using random quadrats, transit lines and target search surveys along the Annan River and its tributaries. The rangers also collected mussels as reference specimens for museums and took tissue samples for DNA analysis to answer one of the biggest questions facing the project. What mussel species live in the Annan River system? This can be a difficult question to answer as it's not always easy to tell one mussel species from another. From the shell, you can't always tell what species it is. The shell is very, what we call, morphologically plastic uh, to its environment, so depending on where that muscle grows, it can change its shape. With DNA analysis, uh, we can get a perspective on how closely related these animals are to ones we've already cataloged in museums uh, or that are available in reference collections. After six days of surveys, the team had surveyed 11 sites, identified three different muscle species, and counted and measured over 600 muscles across the Annan River system. The size and shape of the harvested mussels suggested that it was a species known as Batissa violacea, sometimes called the violet Batissa, and known as Mukia in the Kukuyulandri language of the region. The initial identification was supported by DNA analysis. Samples from the Annan River closely matched DNA reference samples for this species from Indonesia. The expedition also found clear differences in mussel populations between survey sites. At a site where sand was being extracted from the river, the mussels were numerous but very, very small. In contrast, survey sites just downstream, 
had 10 times fewer muscles, and although the muscles were larger, over half of these were dead. Further downstream again, muscle numbers were higher, with many large-sized living muscles. While further research is needed, it seems likely that sand extraction activities are affecting some sites, and more needs to be done to reduce the impacts on muscle populations. However, other impacts such as poor water quality, pollution and climate change may also be affecting mussels all along the river. Interviews with the community also suggest a growing problem with people taking larger numbers of mussels in recent years. You know, over-harvesting is also a real, real big problem, so if we can, these sort of programs will get the community educated and make people more aware that this resource is, is not going to last forever if we continue the same practices. So while it is clear that human activities are affecting the mussels of the Annan River, further research on the biology of the mussels is needed to better understand how to harvest them sustainably and to understand the broader impacts affecting their populations. Given the importance of river mussels to communities across northern Australia and how little is known about these species, this project is an important first step in tackling the problem. So the findings from this is, are really applicable to other places or may be um, applicable. So you know there has been freshwater mussel decline across the Cape. It's an important food resource for people. Overall, the expedition did exactly what it set out to do. Identify the species, collect reference data and document values and past trends. The project also forged a collaboration and an understanding between the Indigenous rangers and scientists, and is a great example of how Indigenous knowledge and Western science can be brought together to understand environmental problems. The research team hopes to build on the success of this first expedition to develop future projects. Meanwhile, the rangers will continue monitoring the mussels to collect long-term data on their population trends and impacts. This information will be vital to managers and the community, especially in deciding what has to be done to preserve these valuable species for future generations. <laughs>